good day. I'm Johannes Neders, and with me is a group of journalism students from the Tuan University of Technology. Our guest is Professor Carolina Utman, the 2021 NSTF South 32 Communication Award winner. Good afternoon. Professor, before we talk about the NSTF South 32 Award, please highlight two to three moments in your lifetime that motivated or pushed you to become a science communicator? Well, I think the first moment really was the moment that convinced me to become a scientist. <laughs> I, I always wanted to be a thinker. And then in my final high school year, my a high school physics teacher made us understand E equals MC squared in a way that was, well, that was understandable. And, uh, and something clicked in my mind. I thought science, until then, I thought science was something very difficult, that wasn't for women, that wasn't for, you know, the, for ordinary people, but only for really, really gifted people. And suddenly, I, I was just in high school understanding one of the equations that epitomized that uh, difficulty, which was Einstein Z equals MC squared. And when I understood that, suddenly I got hungry for more knowledge and I signed up for a physics degree at my local university. And I think that's definitely one of the best decisions of my life. Uh, but that's really the first step. Now, the second step is um, after doing my PhD, I was, um, I was in a postdoctoral research position. And uh, research positions are very, very competitive. And so I was somewhat demotivated by the competition and I, I needed to find the inspiration again, why I had gone through such long studies to do something that was ultimately very narrow. Um, I was uh, researching um, in cosmology. It was a very narrow subfield of astronomy and things. And I sort of uh, fell the, the motivation away in a bit. Then I came across um, a job advert for a position to start a project called Universe Awareness, the idea of which was to use the inspirational aspects of the universe, astronomy, science, to stimulate the development of young children. And to me, that sounded like a dream job. So I signed up, I got the job, and the rest is history. Then I've, I'm more of a communicator now than a sort of practicing scientist. But I'm in the privileged position where I can, I can communicate cutting edge research that is done all around me with the, my colleagues and things. So it's really, that, that's, those are, I think, the two key moments. Professor, and then please describe different aspects of science communication based on your engagement with different target audiences. Okay, well, this is a very, very big question. There are, there are many ways to communicate science. Teaching is one of them. But if there's one thing that we can learn from the, the disaffection, I think, in, among many learners for scientific fields, is that communication goes both ways. It doesn't go just one way. It, goes, it has to go back and forth. And I think, as a communicator, one needs to be sensitive to the audience uh, not just uh, beforehand, but also as we communicate. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, science is so exciting. I really wish m more teachers had more um, been given a, bit, a more inspiring, I think, experience with teaching science, because that inspiration is the magic that glues us together and brings us together in science and in any topic really and I think that glue is really something that can only emerge if communication goes both ways. So it's quite important to uh, to know your target audience but then also to put things in place for the target audience to ultimately then give feedback to the science communicator. Yes I think listening is as much part of communicating as talking or producing. Um, if anything it's a bigger part. It's the it's the part where we open ourselves to our audiences and are able to bring science to respond to ultimately people's 
questions about existence, about the world around us, about the technologies that emerge all over the place that may or may not seem quite daunting. And uh, yeah, so I prefer, I love interacting with learners, for example. I love listening to them because it gives me an insight of what matters to people. And if science doesn't respond to what matters to people, then science is sort of missing the point a little bit, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Um, if we now move to the NSTF Sub 32 Award, what does the Communication Award mean to you? Oh, it's um, it means a lot. It, it's 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 really quite massive. I've looked at previous winners and their achievements, and it's it's really humbling to to join this this group of NSTF Communication Award winners. Um, it's very very special. I think it's um, it's uh, it's not just a validation of the work I've done. It's also um, a validation of the incredible atmosphere in which I find myself um, at the Inter-University Institute of Data and Sensitive Astronomy, where I work, at the University of the Western Cape, where I work, where innovation and going about things in unusual ways is, is really uh, motivated and um, encouraged. And so without the support of Every, everybody from the university to my direct managers to the people with whom I do communicate and especially the people with whom I collaborate, this, this would not have been possible. And I think it's really the, the, the symbol of the, of the award is, is a beautiful 3D printed metal feather. And I think the feather is a great symbol because it shows how things sort of come together. And I really see myself as one of those strands in this big feather of Communication Award. <laughs> Professor, and then as a researcher yourself, what is that one thing that every South African should know? Um, that science is really your friend. Um, I wish people would, would realize that science is more about method than about the facts. So it's a it's a method to gain knowledge. It's a method to better be able to live in this world. It's a method to to better understand what's going on around us. And it's a, it's a, it's a toolkit for life.